This episode of Tweemo is sponsored by Shutterstock.com with over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER5. What's up, internets? Welcome to This Week in MMO 146 for May 31st, 2013. I'm Gary Gannon. You're watching Game Breaker TV. And today, we're going to be waiting a while long, a little bit longer. Just a little bit, a wee bit. Just a wee bit longer for Blizzard's next uh, gift to the MMO world. But who cares? Because apparently MMOs do not work in the States. All that more, <laughs> plus your viewer questions... But first, from Zam.com, Editor-in-Chief. Hi. Scott, Mr. Scott How are you? Are I'm doing really today. well today. It's Friday. It's good. Very pleased about that. It's Friday. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And joining us, as always, Mr. Jason Winter. Follow him on the Twitter at Winter Informal. Eventually. But I'm just wondering, should, should we have like a new name for the show? Because I think Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet could start a train. We, have a lot, we, be, uh, we are on a roll. Well, we are on a roll for well, names this week. Say, look what's coming up next. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But that's only like two words and they kind of go together. This is a new, another new show. Though. Derpy Dragon, the free-to-play show, is coming up right today, right <laughs> after this weekend MMO. Oh, God. Come on, that's brilliant. Q came up with that. See how this all came up? You want to a little story? This is how, this is how we picked into Game Break. What? You've all been running outside in high winds. No, this is this this, this is the this is the naming process for shows on Game Breaker, right? So, I found this uh, image of this dude here, which, by the way, I'm not ready to do the plug yet. But guess where I found it? Yep. <laughs> Told you it's our secret weapon. You people, I'm not lying. We shut our stuff constantly. That's where I got it. I found this. I found this. Uh, this dude. There he is. Look at him. And. What's uh, his name? Dude's I don't know. We don't know if we we didn't really name him, but we were we were coming up with all these names, and it was like, I don't know, free to play Friday. Wah, wah. What else did we come up with? I don't know. They were all just like blah blah blah, totally normal. And Q was like, look at that dragon. He's like a derpy dragon. And I was like, that's it, derpy dragon, <laughs> derpy dragon. The free to play show done. Q, you know, you can make like you can make like millions. Heading up your own like New York advertising agency to do that sort of thing. Why are you still aren't, here? Seriously, aren't these more fun? Dude, I like this new uh, trend of crazy, wacky, abstract names. It works for me. So, you guys know what it is. Uh, basically, we know we do this week in MMO. We cover all the uh, top MMOs news of the week. Um, it's getting kind of gray, I know, because a lot of games are going free to play, but we felt we wanted a free to play show, all free to play show. So, this is sort of the Twemo for free to play games. Derpy Dragon is the Twemo for free to play games. So, Derpy Dragon. Woo. Yeah, that horse does really look fed up. It does. It's just like, what are you doing? Get off. You cat. <laughs> I guess I should give a quick plug because we have another new show this week that we launched this week. So we do know it. Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet. Our weekly Wild Star show. Q did not come up then. Yes. I have to give I have to give full uh Yes. To, Josh, to Allen, Josh Allen, yes, as, uh, Josh Allen, tip, tip of the hat. Josh Allen came it up with his, that one. He was his, he was walking on, he was getting on the bus to uh, Blizzard, and he went, "Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet." No, uh, like, all right, we need to show that. So yes, we have a weekly Wild Star show called Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet. Episode one is up on Game Breaker right now. Go watch it. Go watch it. Go watch it. That show is going to be live Mondays at one PST. So that will be live Mondays at one. And uh, Derpy Dragon will be on <laughs> Fridays uh, at 4, following Tweemo. So we'll do Tweemo, and then we'll go right into Derpy Dragon. So, all right. 
First up this week, the big news, obviously. Uh, they told us it was unsinkable. We thought it was all unsinkable, but tighten down, tighten down. The news My came as a complete go Titanic. You, you know, I'm actually related to Celine Dion very distantly, but that's not a matter. Is that true? Yeah. We have common oh, ancestors. Really? I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Maybe she could sing a theme song for Derpy Dragon. <laughs> I'll charge with Celine charges. Oh, that'd be great, Justin Winter. Yeah. Distant cousin of Celine Dion sings Derpy Dragon. Thank you very and much. And Beyonce, too. Oh, good. What? All right, I'm moving I'm on. What are you in a relative? <laughs> this is getting weird. Um, it is. All right. So Blizzard's secret. Secret. No, it's not real. It. it doesn't really exist. Honest. No one. It doesn't. But we're starting again with it. We're starting it over now. Uh, so their, their, their secret MMO project, codenamed Titan. We've been talking about it for, God, I wanted to say months, but it's actually been years. I guess technically you could say months, but it's probably been over a year at least. Uh, has been reset. That's the news. So we're hearing from 100 developers down to 30. The core team is starting over. Uh, we won't be seeing it. The rumor is uh, 216, 2016 at its earliest. Um, and uh, we were uh, kind of expecting Titan in 2014, hopefully, maybe because of the leaked product slate that everybody's been following so closely and going like, everything's lining up. Everything on this thing was lining up. So Blizzard the Brazilian, had to go and F. As it's known. Uh, the Brazilian. Yes. So Blizzard went and F'd up the product slate. They just had to throw a wrench in the system. Well, it is Blizzard. It's ready when it's ready, except when it's not ready, even when we're not actually making it. Then we'll release it when it's ready. I'm less confused by thinking that I'm related to Beyonce. Yes, okay. I agree. Yeah. The big question out of this whole news is what the F are we going to play now that WoW is dead and we have to wait for 2016? <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. I got to do Nothing. Legendary for like two more years. I know. Start the Titan what show. What are you going to do? There you go. Just, Just start me. the Titan show now. Commit me. We were about to. We were ready. <laughs> Like, let's do a Titan show. Let's go. I guess it just totally throws this right out the window. We can't even do it anymore. You can just um, call it Legend Titan and then eventually drop the legend part of that transition. Slide right over into it. So nice. I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh a lot of people are freaking out over the news. A lot of people are like, oh my god, sky's falling. But I, I have to remind everybody, this is like so, 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 so normal for Blizzard, right? I mean StarCraft, yeah. Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, Diablo 3 all had resets just as like long as it's not it. starcraft ghost I just said, so, it okay. <laughs> so it goes but they didn't say with ghost it was very different the way that it was like mm-hmm. yeah that's done pretty but well, that's on like permanent vacation so i think it wasn't it's not like oh we're, we're retooling things what's so, your uh, uh jason what's your theory what's your theory on the setback i mean you've read the official statements i presume but what's your theory what do you think the reset is, is all based around I think they were probably not as firmly committed to these, you know, the, the whole schedule we'd seen beforehand. It's like, that's all internal stuff. And until, you know, I mean, even even when stuff is announced, it sometimes will slip. So I think that was just sort of maybe more of a rough guideline, an idea of where to go with it, as opposed to any sort of hard and fast, yes, we are doing this in 2014. I mean, any, any number of things can happen in a company that they can, you know, shift deadlines around, whether it's, Oh, we didn't make as much money in Q1 as we needed to, so we have to change our parser to go or whatever. So I, I don't think it's like some sort of cataclysmic kind of, oh my God, we think Titan sucks and we need to blow it up and start over completely so much as it's just sort of a refiguring, maybe readjusting for how they see MMOs come in the past few years, sort of having to you know, restructure things a little bit so they, so they don't make, for lack of better things, a wow clone. Scott, any theories? There's a variety of things that could happen. I know on Legendary the other night, you're talking about it and the idea. Maybe they want to go free to play and they're going to restructure the entire game with it. Maybe they, from the way the restructuring is something to do with the core engine itself, maybe. They need to change that for a reason. To Maybe they were just 
that were just making another game that wasn't that far. I mean, that's what this is what happened with with EQ Next. They, made, they basically made e, made EQ three and went, uh, this isn't quite good enough, is it? And so went back to the drawing board twice. Maybe they were making it and just went, hey, this. Maybe they looked at the Dest- Destiny trailer and went, we're gonna have a we're gonna have something coming out now. Okay, maybe let's have a look at this again. I don't, I don't know. There's there's a lot of different things. It could simply be they went, hey, uh, we think we just need this isn't quite going in the direction we want it to. This isn't going to be up to the standard that we want. And that's the thing with Blizzard is if they don't, th- if if usually there has been occasions lately when it's not quite gone that way. If they don't think it's up to the standard that they want, then they'll just make you wait longer and look at it again. Um, so maybe it's just that they've just looked at it going, wait. We need to do some more work on this. We need to change direction. I think I think the official statement is pretty interesting. And uh, like the journalist you are, Scott Hawks, feet on the ground, feet on the ground, feet on the ground, out, still away, going. I mean, let's see if somebody will answer me at this time of night. So I guess what happened was uh, what what happened? Venture Beat, Venture Beat, I think originally posted that was the first place that I saw this. They posted an article, but didn't really have anything from Blizzard. You immediately reached out to Blizzard. And they responded, which I have to say, I talked about this on Legendary. I'm amazed that they responded to the secret MMO that doesn't exist. That they're like not that. supposed to talk about. They're not even supposed to talk about Titan. Yeah. I've, I've, I've mentioned to some Blizzard employees a couple of times being like, hey, man, so what can you tell me about Titan? They're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, they won't even acknowledge that Titan is actually a thing. And then you immediately get an email back. And here's what they said. And it really so, was immediately as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've always had a highly iterative development process and the unannounced MMO is no exception. We've come to a point where we need to make some large design and technology changes to the game. Uh, we're using this opportunity to shift some, our res- uh, some of our resources to assist with other projects while the core team adapts our technology and tools to accommodate these new changes. Note that we haven't announced any dates for the MMO. So, I guess bigger news is confirmation. Bigger news is confirmation. Titan yeah. actually freaking exists. Why are we running that yes. headline? Let's get on that headline of Twimo. It's, there you it's go. It's done. actually there. Titan we've actually ass- is real. We've just been assuming it all this time. And now it really is. But it only has one third staff that used to say. For the time being. And I, th- I think their, their statement is really interesting because they talk about large, you know, scale de- de- design and technology changes. I don't know. I think Josh uh, Josh came up with a theory about the free-to-play thing, and I think it has a lot of merit. I think that that Just, would, that that alone, if they in- initially set out as Titan to possibly a, subscri- a subscription-based game, and they've now seen, you know, a lot of the, the, the escapes change so much, and they finally decide, like, you know what? We By the time this comes out, we really need this to be free-to-play. That would absolutely put it in this category of large changes and technology changes to the game. Is that a two-year delay, though? I mean, considering how some games launch and then, like, eight months later they're going free to play, is that really a, a two-year? I pitch? I could I th- I think I think from just the technology side, I'm guessing, but I'm always I, right. Um, I I could say <laughs> I could say just from programming, you could probably spend at least. Six plus twelve, six to twelve months, possibly, like getting all that right, right? I mean, the, I, and then I mean, I all the different, all the little things it's going to touch, and then you have to do all the, all the, you know, if they want to strike that chord of like, you know, really doing free to play right and 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 getting the user. There's a lot of design work to go into. Sure, that. sure. Well, well that's Lots the thing is like you have if they you have to test it beyond belief, and we always talk about that psychological factor with free to play games, right? Of like, you know, trying to get you in that headspace of being really like, I want to spend money on this game because it's awesome. If there, that, that just that's just not going to happen in like a month or two. You know, could they put a cash shop in really fast with like some buttons to click and buy stuff? Sure, but I think that this this has to kind of this this these decisions have to kind of run throughout the entire game experience from yeah. the first if moment go- you go in until the very end, and I think it always has to be thought of like that. If you're going to go free to play, it needs your game needs to be built around it, basically, because the game needs to have systems that make free to play worthwhile for you, for your revenue, for your cash up, and also make sure that the game isn't something that's something that's punitive not to be using the cash shop as well if you're a player. So it's got to strike that balance of being like Guild Wars Two does a pretty good job of it. It, it doesn't make you go to the cash shop, but they seem to be making a decent amount of money out of it. 
but the entire game is was built in mind of that there's not going to be a subscription. So it's from you know it's from the ground up. So that's certainly possible. I do wonder if it's it's a confluence of things if they've gone right. So say they went well. Let's go maybe look at the free to play. Maybe we need to change more systems than we thought. And went well while we're at it, I think we can do better things maybe with the core engine. Maybe we can do better things graphically. Maybe we can do better things here and there. And like all the things that they've maybe been sort of stacking up that they'd hope to do when something big had to be changed. I thought, hey, let's just take a step back. Let's get this exactly as we want it to be and make sure it's ready and build it fr- from the base up in the way that we want it. The thing I don't think about the game, which I, which I think gamers out there have all, all jumped on, I'm even watching chat and I see people typing it right now, is they're just like, oh my God, they scrapped the whole game. Where, where, where did we read this? Where, <laughs> please, somebody please point me to that statement because I don't read any of that in anything that has no, been said. Nothing. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. That he's talking about them scrapping to, the game and starting over completely. It'd be like it'd be like saying, right, we're going to make a. I don't know what were the rumors. It was going to be like a steampunk game, or it's going to be a sci-fi game. Right, we're going to make a steampunk game. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we need to change the ending. Let's get rid of all that steamwork design we did. Steampunk design we did. Uh, get rid of all the art because hey, that's no good anymore. <laughs> uh, so, oh yeah, and all the narrative design work that we put into it. Now nah, scrap all nah. that because you know we're going to. Yeah. Let's yeah. just go right. with something else and start all over. Right in the spaceships. That's it. Yeah. Right yeah space. Let's make it a completely different game, and every single word in it has to be different, and every single graphic has to be different. No, it's not been scrapped in its entirety. The, there's a lot of it will still be used. I guarantee there's a lot of it that's been done that will still be used. But obviously there's something important enough that has to be changed, but it's going to have a lot of effect and ramifications on the design of the game as a whole. I mean, Jason, you're not buying my uh, the two year free to play possibility because what I'm thinking is I'm thinking that, I'm thinking they get downscaled for maybe like I don't know six to eight months, and then that team gets start slowly built back up, and then they start you know they because I feel like they probably have a very everything is going to revolve around the systems team this these, this team of programmers who are changing some of the technology and almost nothing else can kind of happen until all that stuff is done. So it's like okay, well let's just take all these people, reallocate them for a little bit while, and then we'll start filtering them back in. Yeah, no, I just don't think it's it's just free to play. It could be like what Scott said, where it's it's free to play, and then they'll also tack on the other stuff while they've got it, and they were gonna increase their time frame by another two years anyway. But well, yeah, I just I mean, who knows? Who knows what the free to maybe the free to play like? I maybe the, if if that could be the thing that started it, and it's like, well, hey, that's gonna put us out to X time, and then that's gonna kind of make the maybe maybe the graphics engine or something like technology is gonna kind of be a little bit too far along. Okay, well, maybe we need some time to revamp the graphics engine because we need. You know, we want to get some more life out of the thing. So maybe the, it's probably like a waterfall effect or a domino effect. Someone, right? yeah. someone in chat room just said and it's, that's quite possible. Perhaps they hadn't factored in the next generation consoles when they were when they were doing some of the development. They've seen this and gone, why don't we get ourselves this game ready perhaps for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox television uh, top set. Um, I don't buy that as you know, much only because it's not like Blizzard aren't, privy to the information of what the PS4 oh, sure, and yeah, yeah. Xbox is going, are go, you know, maybe not when they started Titan, but I'm sure like the second that uh, Sony and Microsoft had specs for their systems, they're reaching out to Activision Blizzard going like, hey guys, look, 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 please, 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 will you please make Titan on our console? Please, sure. please, please. Like- well, and also the, <laughs> the thing is, is with, with the way that the systems are made, it should be a lot easier now to design, to, to actually design. It's not, it's not the huge undertaking that it used to be to, to go from PC to, Xbox and and PlayStation Four because basically the way they're built is essentially the essentially the PCs, uh, but looking one of them looking like a an old VCR. But um, so, so yeah, I, I guess yeah, I mean it shouldn't be as difficult. But I'm just wondering if there's a lot of things that has built up that they've gone right. We can put all this together. Let's change the core engine. And to me, if it's a lot of programmers, the other ones that are left on they're putting together uh, what Titan is now. It's something very much at the, the heart of the whole development of thing, and they can sort of branch out from there. So if they felt that it needed to be to sort of be re-looked at again, it's better to do that than in a year we've got a pile of, you know, something that said, oh, look, it's something that should have come out three years ago, perhaps. I know that this, the sadder news in all of this is that we have to wait longer for Titancast, basically. That's, that's the sad news in all of this. But gamers, it's I mean, not going to be called Timecast. It's not going to be called, you know, I don't know, Blamange Flower, um, you know, Coyote. Would that be good? 
What did you say? Uh, onion flower kind of coyote? Blamange flower. Blamange flower coyote. What's a blamange? I don't know, but it's definitely not going to be the name. No. no. Onion, I like. Onion flower coyote. Onion flower coyote. I always try to look at the on the bright side of things, and I know a lot of gamers are like, "Oh my god, it's the worst thing ever! I'm dying to play a new game. I'm playing World of Warcraft forever. I wanted to see Titan at BlizzCon. I, I want to play it. I want to play it." And of course, as gamers, of course, we want to play it as well. The good news is, there's the, the bright side of this is that there's not a whole lot of companies that have the flexibility to do what they're doing right now, and literally yeah. just be like, "We have endless amounts of cash, and we we're not going to take the chance, and let's just take the time and do this right." So, yes, we all have there to are- wait. Yes, it's going to be painful for us that we have to wait even longer for the next Blizzard MMO, but hey. It's better it's than better the than alternative. It, it's better than what's been happening for the past decade. So. Mm-hmm. It's, be- it's better than, well, this game's not quite going well, but we've got a deadline and, and people are going to start hitting us over the head. In other words, our investors, if we don't get this out the door. So there you go. Don't worry. Don't um, worry. We've got six months to finish okay. the end game. We've got six months to finish the end game. Yeah, It'll take that, forever for them to get, get there. there. Don't worry about what? that. Wait, wait, guys, what's an end game? What's an end game? players take forever to do that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. The big, the other big question is seriously though, about what, uh, what do we think now we're gonna, what are we gonna see at BlizzCon? Because I think everyone was sort of like, we're gonna see something from this Titan thing. Maybe a logo. Maybe a, now I doubt we're here. A peep. I don't. Probably the next WoW expansion. So they do those about every other year. Pretty much. We're going to get like yeah, six more WoW stuff. expansions. So <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that, there is a lot of WoW to happen before Titan there, isn't there? At least two or three more updates. All right, so WoW expansion. D3 expansion. expansion. It's going to be expansion, 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 expansion. I mean, there's going to be, they're going to make a big deal of the world championships, like the Heart of the Storm, uh, Heart of the Swarm, I should say, like the, the esports world championship going on. BlizzCon, that'll be, that'll be featured highly. Hey, look at this. Everybody who loves esports, this looks great. But for your, if you're MMO crowd, uh, it looks like WoW expansion is going to be it for you. Probably it's not Hearth- like that that's not small news, but mm-hmm. yeah. I guess Hearthstone. We're going to need to see some more Hearthstone yeah, stuff. Hearthstone. Yeah, Hearthstone. Sure. By then, because I mean, the, the, betas, the betas this summer, you can check out that on Wowhead, by the way. Plug, plug. Uh, the betas this summer, and you've got, so by the time the BlizzCon comes around, we should be, could we see it? We should be, we might be playing it by then. You think we'll be playing it by then? Maybe. Yeah, we could yeah. be. Could if be not, I'm thinking, that. hopefully everybody for, that goes to BlizzCon gets a First a expansion invite. pack for Hearthstone. <laughs> Will be announced. I, I, oh, announced. Okay, I was just saying, I don't think they'd have it ready. But yes. Announced. Pretty soon they're going to have to come out with expansion packs before the game releases. Here's the expansion pack. You can't play it yet. The game's coming out. Yeah. Don't worry. But we've got more content well, already than you. That's what, that's what Neverwinter does. Neverwinter's done that. They've announced yes, their true. update, and they're still in beta. So. That's true. That's crazy. Beta. Yeah. yeah. Beta. 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 All right, so we got to wait a little bit longer for as a Titan, but I guess none of that really matters because apparently MMOs do not work in the United nope. States. So, nope, nope, done. We're done. Done with show. Bye. Across the border, across the border from Canada, and they just give up. They just give why up. Are we, why are we here? Why I don't know. I see uh, what he's saying. I, I, we'll get it. Let's get into it. There's so Take Two Interactive's uh, chairman Strauss Zen Zelnick. Um, if you guys are uh, Take Two Interactive, owner of Rockstar and 2K, you know they probably they make they make some games you're probably fans of. Make some maybe. great games, maybe just a little bit. Yep. You know, Grand Theft and Borderlands, all those little titles. Anyway, here's the quote. He says, "We're we're, we're I don't know why I went we're 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 I don't know why I did that. Uh, we're actively investing in online and MMOs. We're just not doing it in the U.S. MMOs don't work here. A couple of our competitors have found out that through uh, very, very expensive lessons. One of our competitors just recently announced they're restarting an MMO project. Love the way he, love the way he just says they're restarting. Again, again, yes. like he's even going down the path of they've thrown it all away. All the code went into the dump. It just went right in. 
wheel that out to the wheelie bin. Just we get rid of all that stinking We code. did a, a men in black sort of like, you know, mind wipe on everybody to make sure they didn't even remember any of the work they no, did. Like $50 million, gone. whatever they spent on it, just torched like in the fireplace, gone. So he's referring to Blizzard's Titan, obviously, about their restarting the project. But kind of a bit of a low blow, I think, because he knows damn well that they're not restarting. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I don't know what he knows based on some of his other comments. <laughs> well, he, I mean, he should know. I mean, Blizzard don't know how to make MMOs in America, do they? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, all right. Here, here's there's two sides to this. It's it it is hard to argue with a statement like that. Looking at the last decade of MMO development, there have been there have been but, quite there's been there's been a bit of wreckage i know there's some stuff that that are considered yeah there has been a lot but like i'm gonna go and sell i'm gonna sell go and sell a brick with a turd on the outside if i don't sell it that doesn't mean that it was america's fault that it didn't sell it means that it was a bad product perhaps it means that bricks won't sell bricks don't yeah, sell but in why the US. but but yeah. but but why aren't bricks selling in the u.s that's the problem like the, here's the bigger problem like and i i wonder if has the mmo landscape changed so much that developers i'm gonna say like i i wonder if they're chasing like the they're, they're, they're not really in tune exactly with what players want at no, this point i think that's like, true i think that is true honestly i think players aren't in tune with what they want i i really i, I think it's because that's how it always is. Always, you know, hey, there's a new game coming out. Oh, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Ten minutes later, this sucks. I'll go back a while. But, like, well, what, what but here's the thing. You've been following this for two years. But gamers and, aren't in the business of, of, they don't have to be in tune with themselves. They don't, they're not in the business of trying to figure out what they like, right? It's well, the sure. game developer's job to, to figure out what you want as a gamer and make that for you. So, yeah, I agree with yeah, you. Gamers have no that idea. They don't know because we're saying stuff that's contradictory to what we do. That it's like I have trouble blaming them that much. Well, but game, but gamers, especially in the MMO genre, they're just they're trying to be. They try to, especially people who watch shows like this, where they watch a lot, of, talk about a lot of different games. They try and be optimistic, and they're waiting for that game to 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 take hold and and like you know really give them the experience that they're looking for. So they look at it and they go like, oh my god, this may be the one. This may be the one. This may be the one. And they get it. And they're like, oh, it's not the one. After this, oh, maybe the one, maybe the one, maybe the one. Oh no, it's not. That. Oh, it's just the same as all those other games that I've played lately that also weren't quite as good as I wanted them to be. Which is essentially what's been the story of the last decade. A lot of people have been making games that are decent in part. That they have got like you know elements that are good, but there are a few games. The reason World of Warcraft did so well in many ways was, as a whole, it worked very well, like in its totality. Now there's game. Now we're going. Okay, WoW was great, but let, let's let's build on from that. And there's a lot of games that have been coming out where elements have been good, but the game itself hasn't been enough to really keep the attention for for a lot of gamers. Or there's let's face it, MLs come out that just haven't been very good. Um, and what the reason we're so optimistic is we want to play good games. We're waiting for it. We're waiting for a really good game that that's that we're not having to get past the bad bits of it to enjoy that that, that we're just enjoying a really strong good game that's going to keep our attention for a long time but the issue is though if you asked 100 gamers what they think a really good mmo is you're going to get 100 different answers and that's sort of the issue is that they they can't make a game that appeals to a large enough portion of people to have it be well that's the problem good. i think that's part of the problem is that they're trying to make games that appeal to everybody and fail sure. instead of going to a certain type of player and then like Eve, again we use eve online as the, as the the flagship example for that of going mm -hmm. right what kind of player do we want to appeal to how do we make sure we make a game that, that is strong enough to keep that player with us for a long time and so we get revenue over a long period to make us profitable and what a lot of mmos have done is try to make a game that appeals to everybody have a huge launch and then when that doesn't happen it's kind of fell in the oven like a bad flat. But then part of the other problem you have is when you do make that niche game that like 5% of people like it, or 95% are on the internet screaming about how awful it is. So that starts to build up as well about how... Well, that's why you, that's why you come out straight off and say, we're not for everybody. You come out well, and sure. say, look, we're making this game for this type of player, and we want this type of player to love us to pieces. If you don't like this game, okay, that's fine. But this is what we're going for. I mean, look at Camelot and Change, although it's a, very sm it's a much smaller game, that's exactly the kind of like approach that I'd like to see more companies taking. Not even necessarily that small, and you don't have to go quite so niche, 
but it, the, there's nothing wrong with, with trying to make a game that's really good for a good proportion of people that's a good enough audience to sustain your, to st- sustain your business model, rather than just making a game that you think is going to appeal to every demographic, when it just isn't. We can keep going on for like an hour, but we'll, we'll move on. No, I, cause I, well, I, I, I just think, I think the, um, I think the hard sort of sell there for a lot of these companies is that they want the big, big grabber, like they want the blockbuster, they want the summer popcorn blockbuster hit. They want the world of Warcraft. That's the big money, you know, for a lot of these, a lot of these companies, the smaller niche MMO, it's not really that like they look at it on their, on their portfolio and they're just like, this isn't. This doesn't really fit into our portfolio and they look at things a bit differently and not from like sort of a gamer mm-hmm. perspective of like this might be it, a good game and they, they look at it and go oh they're not they're not looking at this going like, oh this might be a great game it doesn't really happen like that they look at it at like the plethora of their entire thing and that's the that's that's what's hard is that the big companies who have the dollars they they're you know going to throw you know hundreds of millions of dollars at these games and then mm-hmm. when they fail it's like you know and then there's less companies out there who want to spend two three four five million i mean we're lucky I enough think- to see like with kickstarter unchained guys like you know like mark jacobs coming out and doing this that's sort of i think for the gamer i think what we have to look forward to is more games like unchained mm-hmm. in the two to three yep. four five million dollar range where they're not like you know spending gajillions of dollars and you're going to get spe- very specific niche games that some of this audience are going to like some of this audience are going to hate and it's going to be vice versa from game to game to game to game to game yeah and it's like tug is the next one that that's the the next like MMO coming out after Camelot that just got uh, funded on Kickstarter that looks really interesting, very much not a sort of like mass appeal game. A uh, lot of sandbox elements, a lot of like sort of uh, player gen like most of the games kind of like player generated. It's like really interesting looking game, but I think we're going to be seeing more. Than that. And I mean that's great that we're going to see more interesting games. But I think what is right in the US is the business model that's been that chased after by most um, large uh, investors is one that isn't really sustainable. I think it's right now. I don't think it's just MMOs don't work. I think the business model that's been the sort of the standard approach in the last decade doesn't work uh, and hasn't been sustainable. And I mean, that's why you've seen a lot of change to free to play and so on from a lot of companies. But hopefully we'll start getting some different MMOs and sort of new ideas and stuff that people can enjoy and stay with and it doesn't mean that everybody's going to love them. But that only works if if the players get into those games and understand that they're not by these huge companies with tens of millions of dollars of budget so they're going to be a little rockier it's going to be maybe not as graphically good it's going to have maybe not as good support. Well that's, that's that, 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 that is what has to change that does mm-hmm. have to That's change. You, you can't. You can't have the crappy like animations and go back to like yeah. bad. Like does that. That's the key here. Is that a lot of the games that don't have the money end up like you know things don't feel right. You know there's too much latency. The animations are crappy. That does the have pro- to change. They can't. They can't launch. Me, they can't launch with that. They, they, they can't. To do me, it. that isn't. That isn't the big problem though. The problem is, is that there's big games that have had a lot of money that have also had bad latency, bad gameplay, things in it that are just broken at launch, stuff that just doesn't work. I mean, there's some games that like the Secret World. People talking about Secret World in chat. Secret World is like a really interesting game. It got a lot of like cool elements to it, but when it launched, the actual sort of combat and gameplay of it just didn't feel good at all. It, it was a turnoff, and a lot of people just went, spent an hour or two with it, went, "This doesn't feel good," and left. You can't have those elements just not work in your game and expect it to fly. So, I mean, I mean it's, been, it's improved a lot since. But that's the trouble, is making a game that works all over. And a lot of time, when you've got so much money behind, there's the pressure to launch early and on time. And the MMOs are incredibly complicated. have got long design uh, turnarounds, big schedules, lots of people working for them. And, and, and they get put back at times, like Titan. But most companies, as you said, can't afford to say, all right, then we'll take another couple of years and we'll get it right. They go, oh, no, let's get it out of the door. We've got to. And then the game isn't as good as maybe as people want. And then their audience drops and, and then you're in trouble because you're just chasing after getting that audience back. So, I mean, that, that's so... what the story has been of many MMOs in the last 10 years. Yeah, there's so many little, and that's the thing. Like, I, I feel I feel for MMO developers because it's uh, like mm-hmm. in single player games. Sometimes you can give some of this stuff up. You know, you got like a seven or eight hour experience and you're done. But when you're looking to play a game for years, things like combat and feel are just you know huge. 
And I mean, when when World of Warcraft came out, that was one of the things that people couldn't believe. Like, if you if you're an MMO player pre World of Warcraft, you remember the latency, the weird animations. Like, you and you just you you just went with it because you were just like, well, there are no other games that even do this on the market. And then WoW came out, and it was like, oh, shit, this is like completely fluid. And there's well, like, this, I hit the this, button, and things happen this like instantly. Plays like a single player game does. And I, that, I well, do things, and it happens. And that was well, one of the, the biggest finger. points for WoW. But the thing to remember is too that WoW was I wasn't there at the time, but I've heard that WoW had its bugs, it had a lot of oh, yeah. early on. Oh yeah, it totally did. But now a game does that and people are like, Well, this sucks, I'm going back to WoW. So it's like but you gotta give it some time. No, you, you don't. Just, the consumer don't doesn't have, have to. No, that's the thing. The consumer have. doesn't. They the gamer but We're you, not gonna I, get those kind of games if that's the attitude people always have. <laughs> The, the, See, the I, say, the I say they have to make smaller games and be able to focus on these things and just do Ex those things sure really well works. and make sure that works. Don't give me well, all the other about, stuff. Yeah, I'm about attracting a type of audience. I'm talking about the old general quality of the game. Yeah, but if, yes. I just don't get. I don't get how you can have a business model where releasing a game that doesn't work right is a, is is a standard thing to do, and then that's kind of at times been the ways that you release a game. They're like MMO players have basically had to say, "Well, it's an MMO. That means we've got to give it three months until it actually works." Like, what other genre can you get away with doing that? <laughs> like, true. where? Nowhere. If you come out, if you release, like, let's say we release, I don't know, a car. Sim and City. The don't work for three months. <laughs> let's release Sim City, even if it's an MMO, and let's say there's loads of bugs and problems with it. You, you, you can't. You can't just get away with it. And MMOs, you're supposed to go, oh, but it's an MMO, and if people no, get upset, you, you, yeah, of course they are. They're not going to play again if they start up their game. I've spent $60 on this, and I might be paying $15 a month or not, and it doesn't feel very good, and I don't enjoy it, so I'm going to go and play one of the three million other games that I could play that will give me an as good or better experience. And that's why people are constantly waiting for... The next time I'm being optimistic because we really want a good one. We want a good one that works all the way around. And it isn't just this bit works and that's cool. That it feels good, that it plays good, and it's got depth to it. And that's that's just it. And So it's not surprising there's been problems with games over the last decade because a lot of them just don't work when they were launched. Far more optimistic than I am. <laughs> well, the you worst thing about this entire conversation... <laughs> we're just I'm going to bring it back. Like, <laughs> It's like, I'm oh, just, God, there's I'm, never going to be a game that launches that actually works at launch. It's ever. Like, surely we've got to hope that that is going to happen. You, you keep hoping. But if not, they'll just, the end of the world, they'll just die. Because if you keep on launching, games will, they'll have, you'll, you, your time frame of having well, the well, majority well, of your player base will be like a week. And then, well, I've played it, it's rubbish, I'll move on. Eventually, people have to realize, that, look, we've lost too much money doing this. We've either got to scale it down and get it right or be willing to, to put the money in for a longer-term investment than we are. Jason had something. I was waiting. No, Sorry. I was, just, I was going to tell Gary to move on. <laughs> I don't want to move on. You know what? You know what's the worst thing about this entire story? We're not going to get a Red Dead Redemption MMO. God damn. No. What a good game that was. Um... Strauss continued with this statement. Check this one out about the entire industry. He said, how many MMOs have been successful in the U.S.? Two, World of Warcraft and EverQuest. Kind of a bad slugging percentage. And this is, this is where, this is where it's, hmm. But isn't this really just coming from, from it's really all the perception of w what viewpoint this is coming from? Because I could see in some portfolios of some companies, this would be how it would be viewed. Of course, I can sure. easily say, EVE Online and CCP makes money. You know, like, but we could, we could bring that up and there's companies out there making money, so they're successful. But I really think to some of these like larger corporations, that's not successful to them. You know, a couple hundred thousand people, few million dollars a year like that that's peanuts so to these sure, guys again, that's... really the only two games the only two games that they look at that financially look like successful in their eyes are world of warcraft and everquest 
I don't think he's making this up, and I don't think he's just like taking pot no, shots don't, just, don't to, like, just to get press and like just say ab yeah. absurd things so the internet talks about it. Like he's got, I don't think that's at all what's going on here. Sure. I think when you look at large, big dollar corporations, this is exactly how they look at this, and this is why you're seeing less and less dollars being pumped into this uh, into this genre because and, and it also VCs tells and you big gajillion dollar, billion dollar corporations look at it like this. And it also tells you probably why MMOs have had so much problem is because they've come in with the same, that's the approach of coming, right, we want to put, we want to invest 250 to 300 million in the, uh, in the uh, production of the game, in the development, and then we want to be make, bringing in nearly a billion a year in turnover because that's what World of Warcraft does. And then it doesn't happen, and it's like, you know, it just, it's a one-off, you can't replicate that, and it came at a certain time in the industry that will will never be duplicated again. And I've got to have hope. I've got to hope for a good game, not for making a billion a year. No. There's a difference. No, like, no, I no. want to make good games. That's all I want. You see, companies go in and have a rational, a rational business plan that has long-term um, relevance to its own stock, to its own people working for it, so they don't have to sack everybody within two months of the game launching. And that is solid. Eve as a turn like Eve's made like what three fifty four hundred million over the last ten years, and then that's enough for them to tickle on quite nicely. Thank you, grow their base, and that's good. But for companies that come in and want to make that billion a year, if that's the figure they want to look for, then it, then if you see that as what makes an MMO successful, then he's absolutely right that that will not that that is not going to work well in the US because. Mm -hmm. I don't see, I don't think that's tenable. Although, Jason, even from that standpoint, Ever, EverQuest was never that big, so I don't know where he's... No, it wasn't, no. ...getting the notion of those being equivalent. Yeah. Jason, do you think uh, we're just going to be stuck in... Do you feel... Uh, Jace, do you feel that we're just going to be stuck in this, like, odd circle of this is what the genre is about? We're always going to be plagued with just mediocrity? Like, just that's, that's really what the genre is about to some extent? We're just always going to get that? I just think MMOs are, are so big and so complex, and they've become more so, you know, over the last decade or so, that it's going to be hard, if not impossible, to launch something that pleases a lot. And there's so many out there now, it's going to be hard to launch something that pleases a large enough spectrum of people, whether it pleases them through the gameplay, you know, it's the type of play they want, sandbox or PvP or whatever, or whether it's going to be just the general quality of it in terms of polish and bug fixing or whatever. I, I can't see that we're going to launch something that's ever going to be on par with, say, World of Warcraft, which includes something like Titan. I just don't think even that's going to get no. the job done whenever it comes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you are correct. He is right in that it can't work, and you, that sort of thing won't happen. If it's wow or nothing, then nothing will ever be successful yeah. again. I don't know. I think I think there's always, I think there, I, I honestly I, I don't think we're gonna see many. Like I don't think how people thought that they could chase WoW and then we were gonna have like thirty WoWs and be all that successful. I don't think that was ever going to happen. But I do think there will become a time that we do have another MMO that even exceeds the ceiling of WoW as far as in the U.S. in the West of of numbers and subscribers and popularity. I do think it will happen. I mean, yeah, it's just like at, but I, think there was, I mean, this is like a bad analogy, but it's like I just look at something like MySpace, and there was a time and place when you would have been like, "This is the best thing ever. This is never going anywhere." And then all of a sudden, it crashed and burned, went to nothing. But Facebook came sure. along, and it did happen. Like I think it will happen. Like there's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. Like it's just it's just not. I think there's not thirty of them aren't going to happen. No, you're going to have. I, a I'm not sure. Other... I'm not sure if I'm not sure if one game will will replicate it so much. But I do think that the, there's room for a series. Of, like there's room for a f like a few really successful games to 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 come out that that do well and that are just well made. And that's at the end of the day, that's what's going to keep people playing is that they're well done and they're fun to play. And that, and and with MMOs that, you know, they make people want to play for quite a long time because that's the advantage that an MMO has over one of the advantages an MMO has over like an RPG game. You finish with it in, within like twelve hours for some of them. With this, you can carry on. People have been playing games for like fourteen years. So it was, there's a room there. For, there's a room there for it to happen. But certainly, I think some different approaches need to to sort of come into development. Um, and and that and it say if if he thinks that making another wow is the only way is is the way to be successful and uh, those numbers not wow itself if making those numbers is the way to be successful yet yeah, then it's it's very unlikely you can do that so 
coked up. For the holy mm -hmm. crap, are we behind schedule? Magic Man, I hope you're just waiting. <laughs> we were supposed to start the next show today live uh, five minutes ago. But that's not happening. So, Whoops. I saw him. Sorry. He's around. He's around. He's just, yeah, I know he's watching. So he knows what's going on. But we're a little bit, we're running a little long. That was a good, that was a good debate. I want to bring this up every week. We started a debate process between you two, like just a, it's just a debate show between <laughs> Hawk for, I'm trying to come up with a name. I don't know. Hawk versus Winter versus, um, Q, come up with a name quick. All right, let's do, uh, I got some other stuff we're going to talk about really quick. But first, I want to tell you guys about a great deal we got going on Shutterstock. Shutterstock, Shutterstock, Shutterstock. I've been telling you it's our secret weapon, and I'm not lying. All you got to do is go over to uh, Shutterstock.com, use promo code GAMEBREAKER5. You're going to get 30% off on your brand new account. That is a ton. I don't think they've ever given that much off. If you guys haven't checked out Shutterstock, uh, it's stock photography, stock vector, artwork, icons, all that kind of stuff, stock footage. We have a brand new show that we're launching five minutes ago on Game Breaker TV called Derpy Dragon. That is our free to play show. It is the, the uh, we talked about it at the top of the show. But seriously, so we needed it and we needed artwork, right? Could you imagine how much an artist would probably charge to draw this for us? Like, I, I, I can't imagine. Like, it, not even the time invested of like going through iterations, figure out what you want, all that kind of good stuff. You know what I did? I went to Shutterstock. Yep, that's it. Hello. There he is. Derpy Dragon can be yours as well. Just go to Shutterstock. So basically go over to Shutterstock. I mean, we went through and I, I, I find like all kinds of stuff and I start putting different things in. You know, here, like you look at this guy's artwork. Look, look at this. This is the same artist, by the way. Let me see. Look at it. Oh, you can't see it. But this is, uh, we use this for show artwork. We use this for icons. We use this stuff for our website. Uh, this is pretty much the first, first place I go to whenever we need anything for new shows or, you know, we're building a, we're building out two new websites and that's where I go pretty much everything. Go to Shutterstock. Need a background image? Go to Shutterstock. Oh, I need a castle. Hang on. Oh, there's a castle. Awesome, awesome stuff. So happy to have them on as a sponsor for this week in MMO. Just go over to Shutterstock.com and uh, make a new account and use the promo code GAMEBREAKER with the number five there. We're going to get you 30% off on your account. Definitely go check it out today at Shutterstock.com. All right. I'm going to blaze through the rest of this stuff. RPG developer uh, Obsidian uh, teaming up with the Alods team uh, on an MMO. Alods. It's kind of a weird partnership. Like, uh, it was a little bit of an odd one at first. I mean, Obsidian, they kind of have a mixed reputation, usually being praised for their stories, but, you know, some kind of lacking on some of the other fronts. Probably glitches. best... Little glitches and stuff like that. I mm. mean, probably best known for KOTOR 2. Last, fully at Las Vegas. Mm. Um, so they're currently working on the uh, kickstarted, what is it, the uh, Project Eternity thing. Mm -hmm. So they're not really like a massive studio or anything, so... I don't know. What do you think about them them teaming up with uh, the Alods team, which is a Russian studio? Um, Alods Online. You think? It, I mean, I feel like Alods the Alods team has a pretty good reputation in the MMO scene. I, uh, I it's improved. <laughs> <laughs> is the nice way of putting it? We don't have fear of death in, in Alods anymore, which oh, was remember the remember the cash shop. Prices and fear death penalties. Fear of death. The drama. Before the seventy dollar monocle, there was this. Yes, fear that was of death. Really, where... That was wasn't that you know you know what I gotta say? If you think back, that was that was those were the days when free to play was really frowned upon. Like that was mm -hmm. when like all the people who were watching this show were just like, I never want to play a free to play game. They suck. And it was because of stories like that that were really bad decisions. But that's that's really kind of changed so much that now it's the opposite story. But that's those were those were the dark days. That was the transition period. I think they were all just testing the waters back then. They were like, what can we do? It's very work? true. What can what, we get what, away yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, they didn't know. How much, how much money? <laughs> I just, I just, because yeah, the visions of people are like raiders in allies. It's like, okay, I've died four times. I now have zero attributes. I'm going to go to the cash shop now to be able to do anything. Uh, that's great. I mean, what do you guys think about the, this part, part partnership? I mean, are you looking at it as possibly Obsidian going to work on maybe the story element of the game since that's what they're sort of known for, and then you've got the Alods team working more on like the gameplay and the uh, technology side. 
Yeah, I mean, it could be something like that. I mean, you, you think that the Atlas guys are doing like the core game mechanics of it, and the Obsidian guys, you know, maybe helping to make it a little more palatable to maybe a Western audience. They're going to release it over here, make it a little more, uh, you know, make sure you don't have uh, the kind of translation issues that you tend to have, uh, just helping them over the cultural hurdles and so on. But you wouldn't, I, I don't know how much they're actually, actually going to be able to get into the real major design, because just looking at, you know, I looked at a few trailers or whatever, and it seems like it's pretty well long that they have a concept of what the basic game is like. But, what are your initial, what's your initial reaction? Uh, I mean, it looked pretty. It, it reminded me of kind of like a, kind of like almost a Terra Aeon kind of thing. Um, it looked like it was tab targeting. I couldn't quite tell for sure. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of lump it in with Terra and Aeon, at least in my own personal opinion. It's like it looked pretty and they're nice, but they don't necessarily do anything major as far as I could tell. But yeah, you know, it's just a couple minute trailer. It's just stuff really form too much of a judgment yet. Scott, I see you shaking your head over there. What? So no, just, I see you shaking. Yeah. Is that pretty much your same same sort of yeah. feeling? Like nothing, nothing's, uh, yeah, nothing's sort of stand right. out so looks far. Like a, yeah, but I mean, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. We haven't really seen enough of it to really know. No. To know it, like what Obsidian is going to bring to to the the party, and like you know how it's going to connect. And, I mean, like Allods, we know him for Allods. Allods is a game that looks very World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's got slightly different sort of combat in it. Quite a few people really like it. Um, and it no longer has that cash up problem that it used to have, uh, which is good. And as you said, they were the kind of, it was like the Wild West kind of out there when it came to free to play. It was like, okay, how is this going to work? Right, let's uh, make people pay for uh, hitting the W button to move forward. Yes. You know, it, Every time you hit the it, W button, you will be charged a coin. Yeah. That's a, that's a penny every time you hit forward, and you can't just was, keep your finger on it. No. I'm trying to think of the time that was that was even before the whole monocle thing with Eve, right? That was yeah, it was, it was before like, then. Yeah. It was 2010. It was before yeah, but those, those yeah. were yeah. Yeah. it was those after were, like 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 turbine had gone with the DDO, so yeah. that 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 yeah. at least was out there. But yeah. All right. Next up, uh, Snail Games, uh, the creators for Age of Wushu, are already going to be showing off an expansion to Age of Wushu. Uh, at E3, so uh, the game yeah. just launched pretty much. If you guys remember, we just talked about it a few weeks ago, and uh, it only launched now what two, three months ago, about mm -hmm. April, I think, early April. The thing is, it's been out. It's a, the expansion will be releasing in early July of this year, so it's right around the corner. Game's been out overseas though for quite a while, so it's not like yeah. Um, We're catching up with basically the content that's already yes. been produced very quickly. Is essentially what's happening. So look forward to that on Age of Wushu front. On top of that, Snail Game is actually going to be showing off two brand new MMOs, mm -hmm. uh, Black Gold, which actually sounds pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have checked this it out. It looks it's, really cool. Yeah, yeah. it's Steam, yeah, Steampunk. The, the best part in the trailer was when the guy is fighting like the giant boss thing, gets his ass kicked, so he goes and runs into his mech, mm -hmm. and then pilots it into the thing and is shooting lasers at it, like a first-person <laughs> cockpit view. It's like, okay. That's kind of good. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite old. Good. My favorite bit of the city that looks like an atat -at from Star Wars. Oh yeah, basically yeah. the walking city looks like an atat. -at. I was, I'm like, I want to play that now. I just want to, I just want to look at that for a while. I'm happy with that. That was fun. Definitely worth yeah, checking mechs. out. Steampunk, a class and subclass system. Steam and magic factions. Gonna be pretty interesting. Um, Who check it out. Yeah. Play steampunk, guys? Is it gonna what? Who's not going to play this? I mean, you pick up a magic fact. You typical, you know, uh, guys with swords and magic and wizards, whatever. Or I can be a steampunk guy. Who's not going to play that? I know. I mean, the diversity between the factions sounds awesome. They got you got like mechs and cannons and aircraft carriers versus exactly. like dragons and trained beasts. So okay, maybe the dragons. Yeah, I mean, how many how many fantasy games do we have already? Kind of like floating around. So we don't have a, we don't have a triple A steampunk or cyberpunk. Or a zombie, really? Apocalypse. Oh, give me a so oh, give me a cyberpunk. Give me a great, a great cyberpunk MMO. I, you would lose me in that forever. I would be a happy man. Now the other one's interesting, and I know a lot of our fans might go like, mm, "That sounds funny," but they're also uh, doing something quite different with their other game. They're showing off another game called Magic Soul at E3, which is actually going to be a dance MMO. Anybody, anybody, anybody what, do you, what do you think about this? I mean, talk about going outside of the box a little bit. 
You you want your niche? There's your niche. <laughs> yes. That's, but I, that I might be you. great. That's the point. Is like well, I'm I'm, I'm happy to see to. somebody doing. Like no, they're not gonna have millions and gajillions of people playing the dance at MMO, but. Damn, I mean, well, DDR was huge. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a point. Can mm -hmm. they tap that audience? That's a, that is actually what it's going to take. It's going to take some sort of going after an audience that isn't into MMOs and converting them. That's kind of that's kind of what WoW did, really. You know, it yes. got that more casual market and pulled that in. If if anything is going to ever pull in WoW numbers, it's going to be something that's completely off the wall like that that pulls in something completely different. Could Not you imagine? Real, but... Could you imagine if Music Soul is the Music Soul is the MMO to eclipse World of Warcraft? Would you, <laughs> wouldn't that be the most insane thing? It's that like out of all the games that ever tried, Music Soul in the West just becomes huge. Just half the planet spending time, like most of the US, suddenly becoming much fitter overnight from playing their dance dance MMO all night. That would be awesome. That would be great. I'd love that. <laughs> All right, let's do some viewer questions to get out of here. This week's viewer questions are brought to you by Netflix. For a free 30-day trial, head on over to netflix.com slash TV. Make sure you use that URL. Help support GameBreaker by supporting our sponsors. Go to netflix.com slash TV. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial for their streaming service. Netflix.com slash TV. All right, first up, this one from Michael. Dennis, he says, what uh, were the other names for the Wild Star Show? Um, Gary's Hair. Mm, they were, Apocalypse. okay. Apocalypse. I wasn't even going to talk about them, but I got to talk about it. All right, so no, they were really bad. No, because they were all so normal. And it was, it was, they were. it was, all right, well, we can't do Wild we Cast. Had exiled. Exiled. And I just kept going. Wild like, cast, we're exiled. I'm like, it's so um, serious. The Nexus Weekly. It is. Nexus. Nexus. Uh, then Wild Stars. Basically, with a Z. if you if you if you look at oh, if you God. look at the if you look at the now as soon as I saw that and you said to me Wild Star, what do you think of this one? I went. Oh, mm. that that's what it was going to be. It was going to be it Wild, was Wild Stars, with, stars a with a Z, oh, and God. I was like, oh. yeah, that was that's where it was. No. Oh. And then oh, Josh, no. yeah, and then Josh and Allen Josh, said, unicorn. looks like a unicorn duck shadow puppet. And everybody lolled in chat, and then I typed it and put it up on the graphic and posted it, and everybody lolled even harder when they saw it in type, and <laughs> I went, that really just made everybody laugh a lot, and people really like it. Maybe that should be the name of the show. And then Scott was like, you're effing crazy, dude. Are you right, you're smoking? Off your nuts. Are, Are you, you mad? Are you crazy? Smoking? <laughs> Oh, you're not. You're, you're scary. You're off. What are you doing? Are you, are you not taking the mic? What? Hold on. This might work. <laughs> I'm, I'm warming up to it. I was skeptical at first, too. But I'm starting to warm up to it a little bit. You know what? You know why? Oh, also, this because the, the humor of Wildstar and the personality it that it has, yeah. it fits. And it's like you couldn't do this yeah. with so many games. And I just, I didn't want something that was just so serious. And so many of the shows are just like. They're like, you know, the Nexus, and we were going to have like a cool, you know, like the, you know, a cool sci-fi image and like, you know, it's going to be all serious. It's like, no, man, the game is funny yeah, I'm writing, fun and goofy. I'm writing a piece, and one of the things I talk about Wildstar is that it's nice to have an MMO that's not so overwrought, mm -hmm. that like, it doesn't feel like everything was written by Hollywood voiceover, man, in a world, exactly time. And so, yeah, it, and, and as soon as you started talking about it, I mean, I said, yeah, it, it, it works, it fits. Well, it's actually great that one trailer they have that's narrated by that Hollywood voice guy, but he starts freaking out like halfway through it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly the trailer. The, thing. the yeah. trailers are great. Like they're just really funny. Really. Oh, the other, the other, the other, the other. The The last thing before we move on. The other name that our producer was fighting so hard for was God. Oh Wild. God. <laughs> what? What was it? No. Gone Wild. Gone Wild. <laughs> like girls gone wild with Gone Wild, and I'm like, I'm like I am hey, not. It's it's the misogynist show. I'm like, I'm not saying that every week. I'm gonna say unicorn duck shadow puppet. I'll, I'll say uni. I'd like. I'll say unicorn duck shadow puppet all day long rather than go Gone Wild. Thank you very much. All right. Last question this week from Oceans. Are you concerned about the lack of gameplay for Elder Scrolls Online since Wildstar hasn't been shy about releasing info? Um, I'll just say yes. I'll say yes. I want to see, I, well, only because I just want to see more gameplay. I guess I, I don't I don't know if I'm concerned. I don't know if I would say it's a concern, 
But I would say as uh, we're getting closer and closer to potentially a release this year, um, the clock's winding down, and I kind of would have expected to see a little bit more gameplay by this point. Jason, what about you? I know. Yeah, you, I mean, that, that's kind it. of the thing. It's like, even though we haven't seen a whole lot, if they suddenly release a bunch of info, say at E3, and then you know pound us for the next four months with a video and whatever, we're probably going to forgive it. You know, it's, sure. not like, it's not like, oh, you know, in the first year you talked about this game, you hardly showed anything. Well, I'm not going to buy it. Screw you guys. No, you're st- I'm still going to look into it if, it's, if they start showing me stuff now. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm actually concerned like it's going to hurt sales or anything. I mean, I'm going to play regardless. There's no way I'm not yeah, playing exactly. this game. The three of us, we're all, there's no way that we're not playing Elder Scrolls Online. It's just, that's not even a question. So, yeah. Scott, are you I'm concerned? Would you, would you say you're concerned? I wouldn't say I'm concerned. I would say, I'd li- I'd, like you, I'd like to see more gameplay. I'd like to see, I'd like to see more end game gameplay, yeah. which would be the main thing I'd like to see. Um, sorry, Elder Game, because End Game is a bad word that you don't use in PR in games nowadays, I guess. The Elder Game. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more uh, of the game, and I expect we will. There's like how long? Oh my god, it's nearly due tomorrow. Uh, we've got like five, say five or six months until the game hopefully will launch, maybe. So if they start doing a Confidence. steady stream building towards launch from after E3, perhaps, that would make sense. But we'd like to see more, definitely. Hopefully it's E3, 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 let's hope. Uh, Scott Hawks, editor-in-chief over at Zam. Go over to Zam.com. Follow Scott on Twitter at Jarimor, J-A-R-I-M-O-R, on the Twitter. Go over to Zam.com. Jason Winter, follow him on the Twitter at Winter Informal. And you can catch him right here every single Friday on the This Week's in MMO. He is surely the optimist. You said it was Shirley? Shirley. Don't call me Shirley. Thank you. Don't call me Shirley. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Gary Gannon. Follow Game Breaker TV, Game Breaker TV. And uh, only hours left. If you guys are watching this live, there's only hours left on our brand new website. We're giving away a video card, a GTX 670. There's only a few hours left to enter. So go over to freetoplay.tv. Make sure you enter, enter, enter. Go to freetoplay.tv. That is our new website. And don't forget about our new show, Derpy Dragon, coming up on the free to play site as well. I'm just going to try and say Derpy Dragon as much as I possibly can. Derpy Dragon, Derpy Dragon, Derpy Dragon. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week for some more This Week in MMO.